We've seen a couple of showers and thunderstorms already in northeastern portions of Kelowland, and we could see a few more pop up before sunset once we head into the overnight time frame. And we're mainly quiet, but mild, especially further east with lows in the low 60s. We'll go 50s out toward Rapid City and the Black Hills. Then for your day on Tuesday, we we'll basically do it all over again, right down to another chance for a couple of thunderstorms, this time near and east of I-29, with more heat in place, especially in central and eastern Kelowland. We'll talk about the rest of your seven-day forecast coming up, but until then, first at four starts right now. Live from Kelowland Media Group, Kelowland News, first at four. Three bodies have been located in the partial building collapse in Davenport, Iowa, the latest from authorities. Plus, one of the most popular college basketball players in the country is making waves Why autograph lines for Caitlin Clark stretched out of the stadium at an Iowa Cubs game. And Levitt at the Falls opened its summer concert series this weekend. This opener may have been its largest ever. Well, good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First to Four. I'm Tom Hansen. And I'm Kelly Volk. 84 indigenous people are listed on the South Dakota Missing Persons Clearinghouse on the Attorney General's website. One of those people is Andrew A.J. Lufkins. Lufkins was last seen in 2010 at the American Legion Bar in Sisseton. Kelloland's Lauren Solick and Dan Santella met his family at a recent awareness walk for missing and murdered indigenous people. They say it was unlike Lufkins to leave them in the dark about his whereabouts. He always, always called me, no matter what, three, four times a day, I don't care, he always called me, no matter what. So I knew something was wrong when he didn't call me then. In tonight's Kelloland Investigates, Lauren Solick looks into AJ's case and learns more about who he was to his family. Rapid City police are still looking for the man accused of shooting a six-year-old boy nearly two weeks ago. The department is offering a $5,000 reward for information that leads to the arrest of Lyle Blue Legs III. The shooting sent the six-year-old to the hospital with serious injuries. Authorities say detectives have spent hundreds of hours investigating the shooting and tried to find blue legs. If you know where he is, you are asked to call the Rapid City Police Department. Now let's get a check of this evening's forecast with meteorologist Adam Rutt. A little warm out there today. Yeah, another hot start to the week. Yeah, the, really, it just kind of carried over from May. I was just looking at a couple of things before the show started, and I didn't realize just how warm we were for the month of May. For Sioux Falls, for example, almost eight degrees above average for the entire month. And yeah, like I've said, that's carried over into June and it's going to stick with us for a while. What's also going to stick with us? Spotty chances for rainfall. This looks like we've at least gotten something out there, but you notice a lot of our stations that report rainfall amounts have goose eggs on them, including Faith and Phillip and Chamberlain, even though nearby there was rain, at least in the area. Brookings, though, one of the exceptions, they got a little over an inch of rainfall over the last 24 hours. Pier and Sisseton, a little over a third of an inch, just under a tenth of an inch, though, toward Valentine. Now, what we've been seeing over the last couple of hours has been, well, a couple of showers and thunderstorms, some stronger storms even, and northeastern parts of South Dakota putting out around half dollar, not half dollar, but about a nickel sized tail uh, from a couple of these storms moving on up to the north and east. Also notice the gust fronts or those outflow boundaries pushing away and then through Aberdeen. And at times, uh, those outflow boundaries are uh, helping kick up their own little cells. You notice up toward Aberdeen, had a brief little cell come up and then as quickly as it comes in and moved on out. That is as a cold front in Minnesota sags down to the south. They got just close enough to northeastern Kelowland to trigger those thunderstorms. There is a view to the northeast. Speaking of Aberdeen, 84 with the northeast wind at six miles per hour. Plenty of heat to go around right now. Unless you're in Sisseton, it is a rain cooled 69 degrees there. Everybody else, 80s and 90s. And we are going to be doing that all over again as we head into the day on Tuesday. So there is that cold front I mentioned before. Beyond that, a couple little spotty, isolated showers out to the west and we may see a few of those little cells try and crash the party. You see that in northwestern Iowa trying to jump over into southeastern South Dakota. More on the rest of your forecast will be coming up as we head through the hour. All right. Thanks a lot, Adam. Four people died aboard an unresponsive plane that crashed in the wilderness Sunday after flying over Washington, D.C. The crash brings back memories of the 1999 crash of a Learjet in a South Dakota pasture. 
that lost cabin pressure and flew aimlessly across the country with pro golfer Payne Stewart and five others on board. Kelloland News was the first news crew on scene near Mina, South Dakota. And this is some of the video that was captured right after the plane went down. Coming up at 6, we look back at that crash in South Dakota and we hear people's reactions after it happened. The search for victims at the partially collapsed apartment building in Davenport, Iowa, has now ended. One of the residents injured in the building collapse has sued the city of Davenport and the building's current and former owners, alleging they knew the building had structural problems and failed to warn residents. Over the weekend, uh, crews have worked very diligently and carefully and respectfully for the task at hand. Um, in doing so, we've uh, had the good fortune of um, working through the process and um, giving some closure to some families. Um, as such, um, as we come into today's operations, following the goals and objectives by the um, command staff of the city and the incident management team, um, in all hopes, it looks like uh, we'll be wrapping things up shortly. As of now, there is no information saying that there are any more missing people. Well, in the midst of the legal battles over its proposed CO2 pipeline, Summit Carbon Solution is partnering with another Iowa ethanol plant. Absolute Energy, located in St. Ansgar, Iowa, produces roughly 130 million gallons of ethanol a year. Summit says the partnership will result in the removal and permanent storage of 370,000 metric tons of CO2 per year. Caitlin Clark is one of the most popular college basketball players in the country, but the Hawkeyes' superstardom shines brightest at home. Clark greeted thousands of fans before Saturday's Iowa Cubs game at Principal Park. The line for Clark's autograph wrapped around the stadium, with some people waiting in line for 10 hours for their chance to meet her. I think it shows how excited people are about our team, how much fun they had watching our team, um, and to myself. I think it just speaks to the season we've had, but also the two years before this year, people were still excited about myself and our team. So, um, you know, I think it's only up from here. I think next year is going to be really incredible. Um, you know, I'm already ready to get back to Iowa City and start working out again. Clark also threw out the opening pitch at the game. Well, it's been a warm, hot couple of weeks here in Kelloland, but uh, what about elsewhere in the country? Andrew Kozak with our CBS affiliate in New Jersey shows us how a dry May is impacting crops in that part of the country. English peas, radishes, three different types of zucchinis, and fresh broccoli. All part of Tuesday morning's harvest at Springdale Farm Market in Cherry Hill. It all looks, smells, and tastes great, but this year in particular has been a challenge for farmers like Clayton Jarvis. Heat and dryness like this, it, it's a never-ending battle to keep everything watered so everything stays healthy. This third-generation farmer says he and his crew are adapting to this dry stretch well, but... If this weather keeps up, you know, it, it's going to be difficult to, to maintain that moisture in the soil and keep the crops happy. And keep in mind, this hasn't just been a dry May, but the driest May on record since 1964. The Philadelphia area received less than a quarter of an inch of rain all month. On average, we should be finishing up with a little over three inches. With a spring like this year, you know, we're watering every day, whereas in the past, it, it may only be two, three times a week. And for farmer Jarvis, he says that could get quite expensive. We never want to try to pass any of that cost on if we can help it to our consumers. You know, our, our customers are our friends, and we want to keep everyone happy. But uh, there's certainly an incurred ex expense that comes with all the irrigating we have to do. It only actually rained four times this past month, with the wettest day on the 20th. And even that was barely anything significant. But even if we get the much needed moisture next month, local farmers like Clayton are already thinking long term. Climate change is a topic of concern. Uh, it, it means hotter, drier summers. It means more extreme weather patterns that we've had. He and others in the area are changing the way they've traditionally farmed to make sure the harvest, which includes those beloved Jersey tomatoes and the sweet corn, stays bountiful and tasty in the future. From this point forward, that's kind of the name of the game, adaptability. Everybody has to come up with ways to, to figure out how we're going to keep farming with climate change. 